discuss pilot sites. And Chris, are you recording? I just started recording. Okay, great. So, and let's see, are we showing my screen right now? I mean to be. Oh, okay. It, it's a, uh, okay. So I will show my screen unless you want to show yours, Chris. Either way is fine. That's fine. Okay. And we will be hearing today from Helen Weaver and Kathy Perlow and may, maybe some of her team members um, about potential pilot sites. And uh, if you guys want to show your screens while you're talking, we can do that. Um, so yeah, we'll start with check-ins and you can say who you are, where you are, what your initiative is, just briefly. Um, and if there's something in particular you want to get from this meeting or from these web meetings in general, please share that. So I'm Stephanie Rurick. I am in Madison, Wisconsin. Hope to be working with two pilot sites here, or plan to be working with two pilot sites here. Social Justice Center and LA Community Co-op and um, and yeah I'm just looking forward to having these things crystallize as we have these conversations online and then get together in person later in August. Oh, Chris? My name is Chris Petit. Uh, I live in Oak Park outside of Chicago. Um, I work with Stephanie on coordinating mutual aid networks and also I'm working with the Chicago uh, area to be a pilot site. Great. You're working Mayor? with what, Chris? Organizations and individuals in Chicago to be a pilot site. Okay, great. Um, uh, Barry Corin, uh, Chicago, uh, OurVillageLife.com is the website. Um, we're, um, uh, what we're doing is very similar to uh, the uh, MAN diagram. Um, probably the, uh, the biggest uh, thing that I think we're doing is um, we have a very large audacious goal which is to um, uh, have a simple approach to solve the big problems of our times uh, like those on the Chicago West Side. Great. Can you Thanks. type your website in please into the chat? Uh, sure. Thank you. All right, Bruce. Yeah, Bruce Moffat, based in Madison, Wisconsin, working both on uh, resource development communications for Dane County Time Bank and also helping out uh, on the man and looking forward to meeting some of you in person later this month. Thank you. Hassan. Yes, this is Hassan Vats of Lehigh Valley, Allentown, Pennsylvania. Um, we're very interested in becoming a pilot site. Just here to learn more. Great. Thank you. Helen. Um, from Kansas with Wellness Weavers, I am in uh, Oshkosh, Wisconsin, really studying about the system. And tonight I get to go to their Fox River Valley Time Exchange. So I will see if they know anything about the Man Up event. Uh, they're having a potluck tonight up in Appleton. Uh, I've been meeting with people at the YMCA and studying about this community and all their major gears. Um, today what I want from the people on the call is to find out what pilot sites want from me at the Man Up event and once our pilot sites launch. Um, so then I'll present, since I'm a presenter today, I'll tell the rest of it later. Thank you. Scott Murto. Hi everyone, Scott Murto from Lansing, Michigan, uh, Mid Michigan Time Bank, Lansing Makers Network, Capital Village Trade Cooperative, and uh, some other new cooperative ventures which are just getting off the ground. Um, all those groups are going to be part of the Mid Michigan Mutual Aid Network and hopefully uh, going to be. Uh, expanding our reach and resiliency and base here uh, as a result of uh, becoming a manned pilot site. Excited to be a part of this whole thing. It's wonderful. Great. Thank you. Um, anyone else? Hi, this is Tina Ray. I'm not on the um, go-to meeting site, but I'm on phone. 
I am in St. Louis, Missouri with the Cali Collective Time Bank, working with Solidarity Economy St. Louis groups and folks. And um, one thing I'd like to know, just kind of what other pilot cities, what other projects are going on and how they're shaping up, just to kind of give me more of an idea of um, if we're on the right track in St. Louis, we want to be a pilot city and maybe just taking some tips from others and sharing what we have going on here. Wonderful. Yes. So we'll love to hear from you today. Anyone else? All right. So I'm just going to give a quick overview of um, what the pilot site idea is about. And then um, I don't know if you'd like to go first, Helen, or if you want the Lehigh, Va if, if the Lehigh Valley people want to go first. Does it matter? Or, um is Hassan have issues of time? No, I have some time. You can go first. Go for it. Okay. So just briefly, um, the idea, uh, we've actually, I, I just had a really nice conversation with the author of the book Walk Out, Walk On. Deborah Fries is going to um, offer some of her books as premiums in our crowdfunding campaign. Um, and I was just sharing with her how much that book and its principles influenced me, but um, an example. So the book go. It talks about the Burkana network and different projects that happened in very different places around the world, and each one was done sort of in the context of a game. So one that really struck me was um, an abandoned computer Apple computer warehouse in Brazil was in a very poor area and was used for all kinds of crime and. Um, was full of trash and syringes and and um, th disgusting things, and they decided to make a project and make a game out of it where they couldn't spend any money and no one could be in the building for more than 15 minutes at a time, and in a month's time they were going to transform it into a cultural center, and so they did that and and brought tons of people together and they realized they could really accomplish that and they did projects like this in different cities around the world and then the people would come together in a community of trans local learning so they would do the things that as they apply locally to their local hopes and dreams and see what worked and then connect across those communities and learn from each other and, and um, we've really taken a lot of inspiration from that approach and that's what we really want to be doing in mutual aid networks is really creating and creating opportunities or helping to assist people in finding their opportunities to really create what they want in their own communities, what they want in their own lives, and then we support each other across our communities um, to really make that happen. And not only do we support each other with our learning about what we're doing, um, we support each other with the kinds of resource exchanges that we're practicing with. So we can use time bank exchange and we can use uh, cooperatively managed money and other pool resources across distance and really actively support each other in our projects. So we um, figured the best way to develop mutual aid networks is to find different pilot projects in different places that would be um, working with different strengths and limitations and different local conditions and have the pilot projects working in their local um, in their local situation and really support each other as we go. And we had aimed to have at least six pilot sites when we launched Mutual Aid Networks. We now have more than 15 uh, sites where people are very interested in doing this. So very excited to see that come to fruition. And the pilot sites, we are generally, um, most of the pilot sites that have emerged are rooted in an initiative that's already happening, <clears throat> like a time bank or a complementary currency or a cooperative, um, but some of them will be brand new initiatives. Um, but what we're saying, if you have a community improvement initiative that you'd like to formalize further and or develop additional tools for. So what we're not looking for is something that is really thriving on its own just fine. Like if you have a time bank that's doing everything you want it to do, you don't necessarily need to make a mutual aid network. Um, but if you're running up against the limitations of the one tool that you're using, um, then, then it is, might be a really good time to look at 
adding some additional complexity or legal structure. So for us, for example, in Dane County, we are being born out of Dane County Time Bank, and our Time Bank does a lot of things really well, but the things um, that we have a hard time with are uh, being sustainable on the money end of things and the things that are a little bit um, scarcer and harder to obtain than than the work of people in, in the community. So we are going to introduce cooperative saving and, and investment pools. Um, so pilots also should see a way that participation could be mutually beneficial, that being part of our network um, will help you, and hopefully it's easy to see how that might happen. Um, and then also what will you contribute back to the network. Um, we need pilot sites where we have a commitment of at least one person, if not a team of people, uh, to take responsibility to steward that site, ideally with a, at least a three-year commitment. And we need people to be able to secure resources to keep their local project going. So we do intend to work together on crowdfunding things um, and work together on fundraising strategies, but we don't expect to be the main man cooperative to be a big funding source for all these projects. Um, we want to assist with funding for all the projects back and forth. And so this is something that we will be working toward and helping helping uh, each other identify funding sources. So um, now I think it's time to hear from our pilot sites. Let's just see quickly if anyone has any clarifying questions. What was that gal's name that wrote that book, um, Walk, Walk on, Out, oh, Walk On? It's uh, Deborah Fries and Meg Wheatley, and I'll type that in the chat. It's a really lovely book. Okay. And soon um, we will put up on the website that you can get a copy okay. for your donation. Too bad I donated yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Is it retro? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So, Helen, now while we have you, would you like to share your screen or do you want me to show? What? Yeah, just click on my link if you would, please. I, uh, my screen is full of all kinds of stuff right now, and, and my website is not one of them. Can you type uh, it in the chat again and then it's on it, like Barry had something? Oh, can you scroll up? It's in the chat at the start. Oh, there, Chris put it to all. Right under your Meg Weekly, a Meg. Oh, um, great. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, and just, then what was Barry saying? Hang on one second. Okay. Did you have a question? I just wanted to say this uh, many happenstance things that are happening to me. I was taken in by a woman uh, who ended up being the daughter of somebody that I met at dinner, the parents. I met her parents. Um, anyway, she is a wealth management person at a bank and her specialty is HUD housing, financing investors in HUD housing. And I said to her, what would be the issue getting the investors and Habitat for Humanity uh, together with my Wellness Weaver system with, to help people bridge out of poverty so that they're, we're renovating all kinds of housing and communities that are available for these people and they're nurtured in the wellness oriented mutual aid network which is linked to the main man and she said I don't see any problem so I was like woohoo <laughs> because that's the second HUD I, I ran into a guy at um, uh, the DC Reagan Airport who is also a HUD uh, he has to go inspect the sites for the investors whether it's a good investment so for some reason, God is now giving me lots of thread and aligning the people I'm supposed to meet, apparently. Wonderful. But, yeah, so that was fabulous uh, in today, in this week of stuff going on. Great. So, um, okay, so here about what I want to know is um, because I am an old, old nurse that made an actual commitment in 1978 that I would flip my nursing practice to focus on health promotion. And I read the CDC's Healthy People Initiatives, and then I thought, okay, in my practice area, in my environment, in my rural Kansas, what can I be doing to help meet those goals? 
So the first thing was um, I became a certified community nurse thinking, oh, then people will think I have the credentials. So I studied and passed and became certified as a community nurse, which is through the American Nurses Association, the one form of the, the broadest health promotion. Because like nursing, many people specialize, oh, I'm a pediatric or oh, I'm a med surg, all of this. But a rural nurse where I live, in that rural hospital, I commuted an hour, so I was at risk of running into car accidents. Um, and we have to deal with all ages, all abilities. So when people tell me, Helen, you got to focus, it is I am focused. I'm focused on family systems, rural systems, because um, families and communities, we don't have a choice of who gets in our system. We have to be able to deal with all ages, all abilities. So I'm about, um, I need somebody to develop a graphic for me like the man with the gears, because um, but that each community is like a pocket watch. Each community is a layer of all their different shapes and sizes of gears. So they, you know, we have the senior center, we have the quality early childhood learning people, we have the hospitals, we have the mental health, we have law enforcement. We have the people that are serving the homeless. So that is the model of every community that I am saying is, is the fractal of a pocket watch. And then within these communities, we're looking for, because a really fine pocket watch has jewels and 17 jewels. So who are the people that make it so these gears can keep working without running out. Well, those are the gifted angel investors, the funders, the people that see the wisdom of playing nice together. So um, that's the model I'm trying to develop within the man and what I want to offer to any pilot site within this global man is how do I help them look and, you know, get the use that fractal and say, oh yeah, who are mental health, so that they, it's a framework kind of thing. And that being said, you know, my website, people are always like, whoa, it's so, you know, what is this? Well, you see me dressed in costume, you, that's me dressed um, under the Amelia Earhart banner, which is an Apple advertisement that says, think different. So once we get this together, I want Apple to help write an app. And so if you would click on transform the website to make the apps, I was told by a programmer that I needed a wireframe. So this is one step in my wireframe that when, when we have our app and any Wellness Weavers uh, uh, pilot project would have access to this app, then there is the face of the clock. People don't want to see the guts. They want to see the simple face that's easy to use. So for instance, people that are seeking services at 12 o'clock, there is something on your mind because that's the people's trigger, their emotions, they're reacting. If they have a chance to vent somewhere, a form that they can fill out that they're ranting and raving about everything that's upsetting them, that helps us capture what is the information and how do we address that? How do we get the right people on the team to solve it? And how do they feel like valued team members? Thank you very much for bringing this to our attention. Instead of these people are used to being minimized, not listened to, all of that. So that's why, and so each of these portals, as I call them, would open the screen to a new simple face clock that helps people keep connecting to the, to, and stepping them through just in time to help them decompress or connect with, with other people. So then this is, um, yeah, number one, you know, do people, are they hungry? Are they having bad behavior because they're really hungry and they're stressed out or their blood sugar's dropped? Um, or do they need housing, you know? Do they need temporary housing? Do they need permanent housing? Do they need to, do they want to get into this, uh, transition kind of housing and the sweat equity involved and earning their service learning credits by being, um, you know, involved in this. And then um, do they need transportation? So that's how within this, you know, all of us have like, I am so much in my vehicle by myself when I could be taking somebody, but there was no mechanism in place 
to help me find somebody just in time that might be going to the town that I'm going to or the same meeting. Uh, so, and then number four is um, <laughs> help with packing or moving. So U-Haul is a natural partner, but I only have part of my proposal written to them. They have uh, sustainability, environmental things. They extensively now use uh, technology. And in their contract, it says if you text or use your cell phone, it voids the you know liability stuff. So it behooves us, just like the FFA, the research is in, if there's two pilots in that front seat, the outcomes are safer. So also with a U-Haul move, if somebody wants to take a co-driver or just a navigator, they can put that request into the system. So well, um, uh, that's... Can you ask a couple of clarifying questions, if you don't yes, mind? Absolutely. Uh, well, and, and one, one thing to point out is we will be connecting with programmers here. Um, I'm not sure what kind of opportunities we'll have, but maybe you'll find some people who are interested in helping make this an you know, open source way. Very good. And then, um, and then, so I wanted to just get a handle on the framework, or on, um, on what you're doing. Maybe other people have questions too, but I maybe, I want to see if I'm understanding right. Are you sort of like creating a framework for how you would put together a wellness-oriented mutual aid network that could be applied in different places, or are you looking to... Exactly. Every, any pilot project that's in the network then represents a community that could put together and link with this framework. So because in Kansas we don't have a time we don't have any time banks mm -hmm. and we have a lot of small little communities that say we don't have the time we don't have the money we don't have enough people so therefore I am just like I was as a school nurse where they gave me 16 hours to be a full-time nurse I had to learn how to be virtual so because of my training and I know all the government websites that were, I mean not all of them, but the main ones that are bona fide websites that can help communities cut to the chase and not have to reinvent the wheel. So that's why on my Wellness Weavers site I developed the HOPE page. Well yes, a programmer and somebody that's not wordy could, um, you know, go through that. And um, so, and because I'm a nurse that's been given scholarships and I'm in the Association of Applied and Therapeutic Humor, that's why you see me in all these different costumes. And so I was so glad to hear that um, uh, Meg Wheatley and Deborah Friesen are using the humor model and the things that make us work fast. So, um, yeah, and let's see here, Bill Gates. So all of the a nurse, we are trained that we have to, you know, the place of work, the hospitals, the schools, the daycare centers, they all have to have their emergency preparedness and response plans in place. And when I go uh, as a team leader, like to Katrina re, um, response, um, I'm responsible for my team and I need to know about them. Well, back then they were using paper forms when we have the computer that can match skills to the, the dynamics of what are needed in the variety of, of things that are going simultaneously on in a response setting. So that's where my community service learning model comes from and the whole fractal of the hubs of these are have to have the right communication in place. They have generators um, to, or you know, they they have the ham radio operators and the people that power up the communication structures. And we feed people, and we have the first aid, and then I have the mirth aid. You know, so that's how we plug in, making use of the strengths that everybody that's present becomes on the team, you know, maybe they're in a wheelchair, but maybe they can read books and watch kids or make phone calls. So everybody always has ways. And this is just full of links that help people, you know, see other people's TED Talks and how other people have solved things when they've been up in emergency situations. And like we know what happened in New Orleans, you know, FEMA, the National Guard, we always have to be prepared to shelter our people in place you know, whoever is right there in flesh and blood with beating hearts, they are the team. So we, I'm always a, wanting to empower people. Uh, the mental health 
uh, people have long had mental first aid classes available, but people do not know about them. So if we empower people to know how to deal with stressed out people, everybody's more comfortable, everybody's more functional. Great. Good. Okay. So I'm going to, um, I would like to give people a chance to ask other uh, clarifying questions of you and then if it's okay, if you've given enough of your overview, go on to um, Hassan and Lehigh Valley and hear an overview from them and then we could after that have some discussion among all of us. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. I think I've hopefully given you an overview, a flyover. <laughs> Do people have questions of Helen before we hear from, from Kathy and Hassan? Uh, yes, this is Barry. Um, Helen, what strikes me is you have um, um, a wonderful passion about what you're doing um, and uh, an immense amount of work to convert this into a website. and. Um, uh, my suggestion to you is that you consider using our uh, site, OurVillageLife.com, as a tool for you to accomplish what you want to accomplish. I was very excited to see your link and your philosophy, and you said also that you have a big, bodacious goal. So, yes, I would so love to partner, Barry. Okay, great. great. I've been a one-woman show because people say that I had to focus, that my vision was way too busy, and so that's why I've been, you know, the one thing I could do for $265 a year was start a website. <laughs> so Cool. Well, great. That's what the man is all about. Is, uh, exactly. Hopefully we can connect awesome. you with some solutions. Great. All right. So um, are we ready for Kathy? Okay, Kathy. Barry, could you, or, I'm sorry, one last thing. Could Barry, could you um, give me your phone number because that's how I have to work a lot. Yeah, you can just type it in the chat. That'd yeah, be great. You can do it just to how if you want to. Thank you. Kathy, did you want to, I, I did ask you um, and not Hassan, but I'm happy to have e either, both, all of you talk. So whoever wants to kick it off about what you're thinking in Lehigh Valley. I'd actually like to let Hassan take the lead on this. Awesome. Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> Great. All right, we, we thank you guys for this time. So what we want to talk about is that the Lehigh Valley was talking about starting up what we call the Lehigh Valley Community Justice Partnership. Our mutual aid network will be under neighborhood health centers of the Lehigh Valley, which is a local federally qualified health center. And we want to continue the work that we've been doing with a group we call the Lehigh Valley Super Utilizer Partnership. We uh, started off doing some time banking. We were using time banking in addition to some uh, interdisciplinary team to work with some of the highest users of the healthcare system in our area. And we partnered with Lehigh Valley Health and Health Work and the Community Exchange Time Bank to do this. So the, the time banking aspect has been very successful in our model. And just to, to, to give you guys an overview of who the super utilizers are, these are the folks, the 5% of the population that utilizes 65% of the healthcare dollars. So we're talking about folks that have um, two or more chronic conditions and two or more hospitalizations in the last six months. So we're talking about folks that have conditions such as end-stage renal disease, they're on diabetes, they have uh, chronic heart disease, things like this, and they, they're constantly going into the hospital. And what we found is working with a few learning collaboratives across the country is that these hospitalizations and all these healthcare issues, they're not medical issues. These are issues of um, social connectedness and community engagement. So a few years ago, we partnered with the hospital and Kathy was um, spearheading on our end, along with Janelle Zelka, who's our community exchange liaison, a time banking model that we can incorporate into the model as we were, were, were looking at a holistic approach of helping people improve their health care. We started to ask questions like, what does wellness mean to you? And we really started to look at what are the social connections that people have. And as the research shows, the, the more their social connections increase, the more their health will improve. And we learned that not only through receiving, but through giving people's health was, was, was improving at, at, at a greater rate. So 
with this and in addition to, you know, a few other interventions in terms of we have social work on the team, nurses on the team, we were able to decrease folks' hospitalizations by up to 67%. However, we found limitations in just having the time banking model as part of our intervention, and we were looking at what are some other ways that we can engage the entire community beyond time banking? What are some ways that we can stretch this out? And having the time bank under the current health network provide, prevent, um, presented some challenges in terms of just fundraising, that that was one of the limitations, in terms of, um, you know, they, they had a lot of, uh, there was some barriers just, just due to the, the size of the network and they're not being entrenched within the community. You know, there was some philosophical differences in terms of, you know, should the community own this, can the community own this? So our goal is to bring it on to the, the FQAC, which is Federally Qualified Health Center, if you guys aren't familiar, we are part of the community, and our, our mission is to serve the underinsured and uninsured. So our centers are going to be placed within the community. We want the time bank to come up under that, and we want to create clusters, time bank clusters. And with those clusters, we want to have neighbor-to-neighbor -neighbor care teams. This, this, if, if, if I'm speaking too fast, you guys let me know. If you have any questions, feel free to interrupt me. I'm sorry? It's excellent so far. Okay. We want to create neighbor-to-neighbor -neighbor care teams. Now, with these neighbor-to-neighbor -neighbor care teams, some of the things that they'll be doing are wellness calls. And, and again, th these are things that we've done and we found successful, you know, wellness calls. So people will get time credits for checking in with their neighbors. You know, these are folks that we know are socially isolated. They have difficulty um, in establishing relationships with primary care physicians. They have difficulty with need reminders for their medications or just need someone to give them a call and see how their day is going. And in addition to that, what's a little different is what we did and what we want to continue to do is we'll encourage our patients to engage in the community so they'll be also given reminder calls. And that's back to the, the thing that everyone has value. So even if you're, if, you're, if you're bedridden, if you haven't worked in 20 years, there's something you can contribute to your community. And as you guys who do this work know the look on people's faces when you tell them, you know, you can make a contribution and, and just a phone call can make someone's day and change their life. They don't believe you initially, but then when they begin to establish these relationships, they see the difference in it. So, so that's something that we've done and we want to continue. It's, it's really the wellness calls and just having people that – we've been doing potlucks. I mean, you know, there's, there's a tremendous networking that's going along with it. We want to expand it and start neighbors and neighbors. And this is part of the long-term plan, um, say 12 to 24 months from now, to, to increase the neighbors and neighbor care teams to include – people coming out of treatment programs, so returning citizens from treatment programs, and formerly incarcerated. Also, we have a contract through the health center. We work with refugee populations that are being resettled in the Allentown area. So what we're looking at here is folks that have been marginalized and that really have not been connected to the community in the healthiest way, how do we support them in, in, in strengthening those connections? So again, the folks that are coming home from treatment programs, substance, substance abuse, you know, drug and alcohol programs, folks that are coming home from um, prison and, and, and county jails and juveniles that are coming home, developing juveniles that are coming home from juvenile facilities or even uh, transitioning youth that are coming out of the, the foster care system, developing care teams that can provide support to them and they can provide support to one another and also they can provide support to the community. We'll, we're talking about, you know, the training aspect and education and utilizing what they call credible messengers. So we have folks that have made it through these systems successfully that are willing to utilize to earn time credits working you know one on one with individuals to help them reengage in the community and establish connections that we know are going to make all the difference. What kind of a geographic area are you in? Are you in the Detroit area or somewhere else? So we're in the Lehigh Valley which is um, Allentown, Bethlehem, Eastern, for the most part, of, of Pennsylvania. We're about 50 miles outside of Philadelphia, about 70 miles from New York City. And we're, we're, we're a mid-sized city, um, mid-sized metropolitan area. Dem demographically, we have a large, growing Hispanic population. Um, of, what, of what population? Hispanic. Hispanic population. Hispanic, okay. Correct. We have a large, growing Hispanic population. Um, the industry is changing. I mean, it, it used to be... Bethlehem Steel is here. I don't know if you guys are familiar with was here. Bethlehem Steel was big on the economy, Mack trucks. So, you know, our area is changing. You know, there are, there are, I think, eight universities in the area. 
the two large health networks, three three health networks, um, you know, a few service industry restaurants and stuff coming to town. Um, we have we have a lot of commuters. Again, we're only about 90 minutes max from New York City, 45 minutes to an hour from 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 Philadelphia. So we have folks that that commute, and we have a lot of folks that have moved here from some of the larger cities because it has a somewhat of a large city appeal um, and still a hometown feeling. So really, there's been some challenges in really getting folks to, to, to be involved. And just to add to that, one of the challenges also that we saw with just having the time banking alone is some people don't have the luxury to just give their time. So, so that's what we want to talk about, the educational and leadership component of our mutual aid network and how do we let people's time help them develop skills and network to where it'll help them achieve economic justice and, and improve our community in that sense. Well, it sound, uh, this is Barry. Uh, this, again, just as I said to uh, Helen, it sounds to me like what you're doing, what you're up against is similar to what I'm doing on the Chicago West Side, which is a very uh, impoverished black area. And, um, uh, you know, I um, think we've got a pretty simple approach that might be relevant to you, and it's a whole community approach rather than um, uh, focusing on one item like restorative justice or, or another issue or health. I, I agree. That, um, and that's, that's one of the things, another component we want to look at is how do we look at large-scale community engagement. So, so we have the restorative justice aspect. You know, we're trying to achieve wellness and justice in the community. Then another aspect is we're looking at um, tools such as art of hosting, community dialogue, circles, um, lunch and learns. And what's different about this project for our area is we want these efforts to be led by folks from the community, the same folks we talked about before the folks that have, have traditionally fell through the cracks whose voices have been unheard. We want to really emphasize the training and education and support along equipping them, or not even equipping them, but working with them to have their voices heard and their needs heard through the different participatory processes. So it's I, fabulous, I, yeah. Personally, I would really like to talk with you. Uh, so if you're open to it, um, I'd really like to know. We'd love it. I'd love to speak with you. So I have a are, question, which is, yeah. are you coming in to Madison for the summit? That's on. Um, let me check and see if I have that. What other dates? Was that in November? No, no, it's August 20th, 28th. Oh no, I'm not coming to that one. <laughs> it's August. Okay. Um, and I, I will. I'm planning to come out to Pennsylvania in late September, like very end of September. So That's what I'm thinking of, I believe. Yeah, so hopefully we can get a group of people together. And, and um, I'm, I would also like to um, see if we can reconnect with Paul Glover and the Patch Adams Clinic he's developing in Philadelphia, which has so many similarities, and it's a very cool project also. What you guys are doing sounds amazing, and, and we've already been looking to you for inspiration, working on developing the neighbor care team model. It's um, really cool and lots of overlap, it sounds like, with what Helen's doing. Um, so again, part of the point. Do other people have questions, or Hassan and Kathy, do you have more that you want to share about your pilot project? I, I do have a question. So about two weeks ago, I was on the go to meeting with you guys, you were developing the letter for the um, memor memorandums of agreement? Yes. Has that been published? Because I still have not seen that. That, that, was, that was very detailed. That was helpful. Um, it's, not, yes. it's not published yet. The uh, working board is meeting this afternoon, uh, finalize it, um, and then it will be on the website shortly after that. Okay. So we, we haven't missed any deadlines. That's, I just want to make sure that we're not missing anything. On our no, yeah. it won't be possible for you guys to miss a deadline. <laughs> I mean, just uh, we, I mean, we, uh, we really want everyone who is serious about being a pilot site to have every opportunity. And um, yeah, we're not gonna operate super 
strictly in any way at the moment about deadlines. So here's the link to the Google Doc where you can see the draft. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Yeah. Thank you. And if you want to, uh, I mean, it is a working board meeting this afternoon, but you can you can join and, and discuss this if you want to, because we really want to get it finalized and ready to go. Okay, what time is that at? Three o'clock central. It's yeah, for our time, Hassan. I'll be on the call today. Okay. Cool. So Kathy's the hey, Hassan. Hassan, this is Scott Murto. Um, could you put a link to your time bank in the chat? I'd like to check you guys out. Kathy, do you have that on hand? Yeah. 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 Cool. Thanks, Hassan and Kathy. Thank you, guys. We really appreciate this opportunity. Looking forward to working with you guys and sharing yeah, and learning. Yeah, awesome. Yes, very exciting. Um, so we will have some things during the summit that you can join online, um, and we'll uh, set those up and specify. Um, but one of the things that will be a big one is our first general membership meeting, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Central Time. Um, we'll probably make it more like 10 to 1, I'm not sure. Um, just we'll, we'll wiggle these times a little bit. Um, but that one will definitely have people join us online and we'll be electing our board and approve, you know, just really making everything official. So that would be great. Um, I'm sure we'll want to hear from different pilot sites there. And then Barry, I was going to point out for you, um, we don't even, I didn't even schedule stuff for the late afternoon, early evening yet for Tuesday, August 20, 25th. So we'll definitely do a session that goes into different aspects of the years and collaboration. Oh, thank you. Stephanie, a point of clarification. Um, all pilot sites, are they going to be required to participate in the Man Up Summit in some way, either virtually or in person? Um, that seems to me very important, actually. It's foundational. It's ideal, certainly. Um, you know, some might have limit, limitations that just absolutely prevent them from that. But, no, I mean, it's really going to help us clarify how we move forward. So we'll really encourage it. Yeah. Um, so any other, any questions um, or discussion of either of the pilot sites that you've heard from? We still need their link uh, for the um, Lee, Lee High Valley. Kathy, do you want to type it in the chat? Well, it's going to be a problem because you can only get to the front page. Um, so I'm trying to see which, which one's better to give because you get the hospital one, which is very vague. Um, okay. Well, if, if, if you could um, just give us like a brief summary, like how many members you have and how oh, long okay. you've been around and how things are going and stuff like that, that, that that'd be fine. I'd okay. I will do that. On the web. And do you want to just share some of that verbally too? Oh, okay. <laughs> well, it's actually been around for 15 years. I just retired this February from the time bank so I could do other work like mutual aid network stuff. Um, we have been um, affiliated with a uh, hospital um, for the entire 15 years, funded by the Dorothy Ryder Pool Healthcare Trust, which was fabulous. Um, it was also very restrictive, as Hassan had, had mentioned. Um, so there were some, some things that made it difficult being part of a, a large hospital network. Um, the strongest piece is the fact that through a little project that we did working with some of our chronically ill patients during this time, realized that um, everybody does have something of value and there are ways to engage more people in the community. Um, the struggle is um, the hospital doesn't recognize the fact that, you know, we're not just a another social service 
type organization. So it, it took a good eight years to really get that through to them. Um, currently, they're running at, at about 700 uh, members, uh, probably 450 active at the time, um, and doing pretty successful. They've, there's been changeover in staff. Uh, there's two fairly new people on board now, so they're kind of reorganizing the overall structure of the hospital network is reorganizing itself too. So there'll be some changes happening, which is why we feel strongly that we need to work on making these clusters slash hubs, whatever it be, a lot stronger and be more community driven. Um, so that's kind of the piece that I'm excited about continuing my work on. Um, and I'm looking forward to it. So, um, does that help? Yeah, that's fantastic summary. Thanks so much. Okay. And it's part of Lehigh Valley Health Network. I can give you that link. The home page is very clinical driven um, and doesn't really show the community end of the work. Um, the Neighborhood, okay. Health Cent Neighborhood Health Center, actually their link um, some of the work that they've been doing. Hassan, maybe we could put the link up of the, the final report. Okay, I'll do that right now. With it, because of the work with the super utilizers, I think that's important to show um, you know, how the time bank really did help them and why this work is so important moving forward for us. Um, so I think that would be a really important piece. Great. So um, cool. we thanks have. Again, you guys. Go ahead. No, I, I just said that. Cool. Thanks again, you guys. So we have a little less than 10 minutes left, and I would like to um, make sure that you have a chance to ask more questions or point out, um, you know, wherever you see some nice synergies. I think we've we've heard a lot of those. And then um, otherwise, I, I'm also interested in how you want to spend our time together in the, so we have really two more web meeting sessions before the um, in-person summit and so I want to get a sense of what you would like to discuss online before we get together in person um, and then it was also helpful to get the suggestion from Barry I have gone ahead and added in a session for the 25th um, so yeah, uh, uh, let uh, I'll, let's just go around the pretend circle, um, and you can ask a question or point something out about this pilot discussion, or and or say what you would like to do in the remaining uh, online summit. So Chris Petit. Um, yeah, this is Chris. Um, I think I'm not sure if it would be useful for people, but um, you know, talking about what people need to um, bring their community together uh, as a pilot site and steps moving forward might be helpful uh, for next session and also taking into account what um, work they would like to get done and what connections they would like to make at the summit itself. Excellent. So uh, steps to become a pilot site and then also establishing goals for the in-person summit. That summarize what you're saying? Yes, very much so. Cool. Um, I, I think that actually I would re really like to maybe talk about the steps to become a pilot site next week, um, if we can be ready for that. And that's a really excellent suggestion. Thank you. Barry? Um, I have uh, a concern about the uh, pilot, pilot site uh, a memorandum of agreement. Um, uh, okay. It fits and doesn't fit uh, for me, and uh, uh, so uh, that's on my mind. Um, and uh, I'd like to have a better sense of um, there are a lot of uh, people doing a lot of things, and that's the work you've you've done in assembling us all and putting us in touch with each other. But um, I don't have an overview of uh, websites, uh, you know, uh, websites of people and contact info. 
Um, okay, that is um, helpful of websites, people, contact info. Yeah, and that's something that um, getting these things together with the, you know, having the paperwork, like the memorandum of agreement and people coming on as official pilot sites, it'll be easier for us to collect that and put that in a central place, and I appreciate that. And um, Chris Petit, what would you suggest for Barry connecting with the MOA discussion? Are we going to have another um, pass through it, like in depth at a social working group, or would it be more a working board? Um, um, we did the, a pass yesterday with the social work group, and so we're looking to finalize it today with the working board. He's welcome to attend that meeting at 3 if you're able. If you're not able to make that meeting, you're welcome to email me and I'll take your feedback to that meeting. Or you're welcome to call me as well. Yeah, I, I mean, I've got a, a, you know, the thrust of it is it sounds like. Um, Actually, this is um, because yeah. we need to go through yeah. and go ahead. be done in five minutes and be, we'll need to really discuss it today anyhow. So. Okay. Yeah, and Stephanie, you, uh, are you available or... for a, a conversation? Pardon? Are you, uh, Stephanie, are you available for a conversation? Um, if you could join us today at three, that would be really great. Um, would you be able to? Um, I, I don't know how helpful I could be uh, given yeah, where you you're could, at. If you could just, so it won't be helpful to just have the conversation with me. If you could email us your. Um, it, it wasn't about the memorandum Chris, aside. <laughs> the memorandum aside. Yeah. Uh, I was suggesting that uh, if you're available, I'd like to talk with you. Okay. Okay, so let's talk about that later. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, Bruce? Uh, really just echoing what you and Chris had um, had discussed about the pilot sites. I think that would be helpful. And if we can, I'm not sure if it would be premature, but to get into uh, at some point about joint fundraising interactions. We've had some conversations with some sites about what that might look like, but might be helpful sooner or later to start envisioning that degree of collaboration. Absolutely. Thank you. Hassan. I, I think everyone's touched on it. The only thing I would add is, and maybe not now, but at some point just learning what, what's, so so for us we envision being part of this is learning co collaborative where we can um, share from the experiences and the talents that are in the room. So at some point just learning more about or maybe having a space where people's skills and experiences are kept so that we know if I have a question about uh, micro-lending that I can call Helen. You, know, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, so actually what the thing that would be really ideal, and we're going very slowly on this um, just because of, of I think everyone's sort of level of overcommitment. Um, but we will move much more quickly on this during our um, during our summit. Is putting things up on the main man. So what we want is to be able to see all that in the marketplace. Like I already put support for developing restorative justice projects and haven't gotten to much else. But um, we really want to be able to see that in the main man and really start exchanging our time and talents and sharing that with each other. Oh, oh yeah, great. I've been very remiss in in uh, populating my man site. That's fine. We all have, um, but we will be doing that. We'll be making sure that we get that done leading up to and during the summit later in August. So, um, and so maybe we'll be a good thing for next about week? that for this for one of these calls. Would that be a good thing that we all kind of get a refresher and walking through and actually practicing posting our stuff? Yeah, you know what? I'm going to suggest that we do that on the 19th um, because that'll be the day before the in-person summit starts and we'll have it populated more for our summit. You guys up for doing that on the 19th? Yes, I am. Okay. So I'll just tentatively put that and see if there are reasons not to. Pardon? 
That'll be at 10 o'clock, like this one? Yeah, yeah, regular web summit time. Okay. Cool. So, Helen, do you have anything else to check out with or suggest? Um, yeah, I, I uh, would like to get clear on what you want from me, what level of participation during the Man Up, you know, as far as sessions, and because I think it's so important that uh, um, Barry with his village concept and Hassan and, and Kathy with the Lehigh and me really, really need to get together and know each other's stuff you know, look at each other's websites and brainstorm, brainstorm, how do we keep putting these together for the best of the best, you know, because then we become a more useful model for all the other pilot sites. Yes, absolutely. So, and then that's another thing that we'll focus on during the summit is how we really connect moving forward. So some of us will connect in person then and some of us won't, but we'll really have to, um, really have to establish how we connect with each other and it will help to have us all be members of the main man and doing exchanges and and sharing in this forum I think. All right Kathy? Um, no I think you've covered a lot. I am hoping to get out there if not for at least for four days. So. Yay! Great. Yes. <sighs> Good. I'm squeezing it in before the leadership retreat. <laughs> Thank you. Great. It'll be so much fun too. Yeah. Scott Murto. Uh, it's all been great comments um, and suggestions here to four here in the last bit. Um, the only thing I would think of adding is, um, and I think we might have touched on this before in a previous call, uh, is to have some kind of a bulletin board function on um, the MAN website and, and where people could just like, hey, I just thought of this. Or I got a question about that. Just so someone could, we could just have like a public bulletin board for just random thoughts as the end of August approaches, mm -hmm. things or people thinking of and whatever. I don't know if folks think that might be helpful, and if, well, if we have a way to do that easily, you know. Maybe we do, Chris. Would the blog function of this work that way? Um, it possibly could. I'd have to talk to Karen about it. No, no, I'm talking about on uh, Weezer uh, or at the Weasley Network. But what about the, what about the forum on Weezer? Yes, that okay. works that way. Let's use yeah, the forum on just, Weezer. Let's just start using this thing. Yeah, it's like, hey, I just had a thought. Has anybody thought about this yet? Or hey, I just got this great idea, and we'll just like, it'll be just a central collection of as thoughts yeah, come to our mind. Okay. On Weezer, yep, that's and then, yep, and then and then people could make comments and could generate discussions, you know, whatever. The only limitation is that me only members can use that. So, um, but uh, it'll be great for everyone to become a member now. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I mean, everyone on this call ostensibly wants to be a member of the main man. We're talking about being pilot sites and things like that. So go ahead and join. Um, and you can find <laughs> it at the main page, mutualaidnetwork.org. So, Chinuri, you still here? Yes. Hi. Did you say Barry? No. No, I said Chinuri. Pardon me? No, I have Chinuri from, uh, from St. Louis, but maybe oh, we would love That's okay. I don't okay. see her on the board anymore. What? I don't see her on the list of attendees. Yeah, okay. Um, so I think we have come to a close, um, unless there's anything pressing that we missed. So next week, um, well, I'll talk with Chris and Bruce about this more and make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, sounds like next week would be a good time to go into how a pilot site gets started. I don't expect we have all the answers, but we can start um, we can start putting that together and then identify what more we need, and, and that can help us going into the summit. Um, and then tentatively saying the, the following week, um, the 19th, 
would be a time that we start really populating the man marketplace um, in it so we can I think that will really help us understand too what some of the strengths and limitations are of Weezer because really starting the next couple days we'll be having access to some um, programmers. Our, the Weezer programmer will be here and we'll be participating in the Forward Technology Festival. Um, so it'll be a really good time for us to have a better handle on Weezer. So I think that the 19th would be really good for that unless um, there's a pressing reason to do something different. Um, and then after that, we'll be in the summit. So I, I want to ask you all, please um, register for the summit. There's a registration link on the summit page off mutualaidnetwork.org. Um, when you register, it gives you a chance to donate at the site. Please donate. Please share that site. We really need to raise money. Um, we really need $10,000 to cover the expenses of this summit. So we, we really need your help raising it. Um, there are no deep pockets here or anywhere. We hope to deepen our pockets with the things that we're going to develop, and I think we'll really learn how we can do that. But in the meantime, we really need your help. So Wisconsin Institute of Discovery, Wisconsin is misspelled on this page. Oh, okay, thank you. On the Man Up Summit page? Correct. We're the register here. Yeah. Okay. Oops. I sent the wrong link. So here's the Indiegogo page. You'll see we've taken a big leap forward Yay. as of yesterday, um, but we still have a long way to go, so we really need your help. Okay? 